Today we're talking about vintage lenses and why it could be a good idea to add a couple of those to your lens collection. We'll go over some of the pros and cons, the why and hows, and I'll do my best to sneak in some test footage from a couple of the lenses that I have in my collection. I like to think of old lenses like vintage instruments. If you take a look inside a recording studio today, you'll find old guitars and other types of vintage equipment because they sound great still. And the same thing goes for vintage lenses. A lot of cinematographers likes to use vintage lenses when they're shooting digital because it'll give them a less technical look and some of that more organic film style look. So in essence, they're bringing some of the components from the film era onto their digital cameras and we as small creators can do the same thing now one of the best things about vintage lenses is that they can be dirt cheap i bought two used pentax cameras along with four lenses for about 20 american dollars so you don't have to go after the hyped up vintage lenses from the get-go you can still do nice looking footage with pentax or old minolta lenses now, as an example, let's take a look at a couple of clips from two of the vintage lenses that I have in my collection. And let's start with the Vivitar 70 to 300. Now, this lens has an average price of somewhere around 25 US dollars. And let's also take a look at the Chinon 35 to 70. And this lens is quite interesting because I actually found an almost identical lens, but labeled Carl Zeiss Jena pan color me or mc and the average price on that lens is not 45 dollars Now, lens manufacturing 30 or 40 years ago wasn't as high-tech as it is today. And some people claim that today's lenses, while they are more optically accurate, they're lacking in textures and what some people refer to as 3D pop. Now, while 3D pop probably is a result of older lenses having more field curvature than a lot of newer lenses, it certainly can have a nice effect on your footage. And maybe that's one of the key ingredients in this more vintage look. So different methods of producing the actual glass elements, but we're also looking at different styles of coatings and in some cases no coatings at all. And this means that vintage lenses are usually more prone to flare than modern day lenses. And it also gives them kind of a softer and less contrasty look. And it's all part of the secret in order to get more of that organic filmic look in camera. And you will understand once you got some of this footage in front of you, how easy the look kind of comes together almost by itself. Well, first of all, you will need a lens adapter. And these days you should be able to find adapters for pretty much any mount and any camera. And there's adapters for both DSLRs and mirrorless cameras like this one from KNF Concept. This is for a mirrorless camera and they're usually a bit chunkier than uh, the adapters for DSLRs. Now, there isn't a whole lot going on inside these adapters since most of the lenses don't have any electronics in them, but I would still suggest you stay away from the cheapest ones you can find. Now, when I did some research to get my adapters, I noticed that some people were complaining about um, some adapters being difficult to unmount and uh, adapters getting stuck on cameras or on lenses. And in some other reviews, I found that people were mentioning that they had a significant play between the adapter and the actual camera. 
Now, as I mentioned a couple of seconds ago, these lenses lack electronics. And if you look at the screen on this picture, you see that my display simply says F0. And that means that you're also using the aperture ring on the lens itself to adjust your aperture. So with no electronics in these lenses, we're also talking about manual focus. But keep in mind that these lenses were built for manual focusing. So, I mean, look at this one. Look at the focus ring, how long it is. It's smooth as butter. And I think the focus throw is almost 180 degrees. And if you compare that to modern photography lenses, they usually have a much shorter focus throw. And that makes it easier to focus past your subject by accident. So in this sense, vintage lenses are more similar to cine lenses when it comes to a long focus throw. Now, before we get to the pros and cons, there's two more things that I want to talk about, and that's dust and lens fungus. So these lenses are old and you will come across lenses with dust inside the actual lens. And two of the lenses that I got actually had some dust in them. So I took those apart and cleaned out the dust. I will not recommend that you do this unless you have confidence in your own skills or if you're willing to gamble, I guess. I would recommend that the first thing you do is to mount the lens to your camera and take some stills, record some video and see if the dust actually shows up in your footage. If it doesn't, then you should be good to go. When it comes to lens fungus, now this can be trickier to clean out. I personally don't have any experience cleaning out lens fungus, so I would suggest that if you find a lens with lens fungus, you either leave it to a professional to clean or you simply say thank you, but no thank you to a lens a la fungi. fungi. So let's dive into my list of pros and cons. And let's start with the pros. Organic look. I think I've talked enough about this, but it's number one on my list of pros. Second one is long focus throw, so that makes it easier to pull focus manually. Size and weight. Now, these lenses are usually a lot smaller than modern day lenses. This one, the 70 to 300, it's not super heavy if you compare it to a Canon 70 to 200. I think those are somewhere around 870 grams or something. Price. Now you can find tons of super cheap and uh, really interesting vintage glass. There are, of course, vintage glass that are highly sought after, but a lot of these lenses like this one, $25. Another one is build quality. Now these lenses are usually made out of uh, aluminum and metal. So if you compare it to cheap plastic lenses, the build quality is super great. And the fact that these lenses are 35, 40, 45 years old, and they're still working. Well. Center sharp. Now these lenses are usually sharp in the center and, and a bit softer uh, towards the edges. And this is a good thing in my opinion, because that helps draw focus to your main subject. And bokeh. So a lot of these lenses have fewer aperture blades, and that means that they will produce a pretty crazy and cool bokeh a lot of times. And I've also seen some of my lenses giving me almost a lemon-shaped bokeh, which is really cool. So when it comes to cons, I just wanted to mention that some of these things that we might consider as cons actually are part of the character or what we're looking for when we're using uh, these older vintage lenses. So you can't have a pros and cons list without the cons, right? So uh, let's start with the first one. So no autofocus, and that's an obvious one. Uh, that means that they're probably not gonna be the best choice for uh, a vlogger. Zoom lenses are usually not as fast as zoom lenses available today. So if you're looking for fast glass, then you should probably stick to primes. Lower contrast. Now we did talk about this before. These lenses are usually a bit softer and lower in contrast than uh, contemporary glass. So if you're doing manual focus and you're shooting with a flat picture style or log and your camera don't have any view assist or if you don't have a monitor with peaking or a lot support, then yeah, a bit trickier maybe. And lastly, flares. 
Now, this can be a pro and it can be a con. Uh, I personally like flares when I'm using these lenses, but if you're concerned about uh, getting too much flares, you can use a matte box or you can simply just tape a piece of uh, cardboard on top of your lens as uh, a hood and you should be good to go. Well, I hope I've inspired you to give vintage lenses a chance. And I've also added a link in the description to some nice film grain that you can download and put on top of your footage uh, to give it a more cinematic look. And well, with that said, uh, oh, I, I do got a really nice uh, video for you in the works. So make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my next video. And yeah, with that said, I think it's time to say goodbye or hey door, like we say in Sweden, bye and hate over.